Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this uh, fifth day of October, and it is Thursday, and today's topic is titled, The Solution for Human Hearts. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already, and if you are saved I hope this broadcast will be helping a blessing to you in some way. And even if you're not saved, I hope you'll trust Jesus and be saved today. And all that good stuff. So we're going to start with today's scripture song from Philippians 2, 5 through 8. And let's go ahead and look at Philippians first and chapter 2. And get some context here. So Philippians chapter 2. Philippians is a good book here. So let's go here and check it out. <clears throat> See what we have here around uh, chapter 2 and verse 5. So let's see how many verses are there. So there's 30 verses, but we won't read the whole entire chapter here, but give you a, a little bit uh, more in these verses here. Starting in verse 1, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And then, we start with the scripture song verses here. In verse 5 it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, I encourage you to read the rest of this on your own time. I want to give you some extra stuff there about uh, the Lord and this topic here, or I mean this scripture song. So let's go ahead and press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> here we go. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let, Let this mind be in you, which, which was also in Christ, Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, being in the form of God, God did not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and men in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He found himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we'll put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. I need to move up a little bit, so pardon me. Yep, okay. So there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, I wanted to get a little closer there to the uh, camera. So, all right. So now it's time to get into the Baptist bread topic for today, for October 5th, Thursday, titled The Solution for Human Hearts. And it says here in James 4, 8, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded James 4, 8, and today's author is J.H., that would be the initials for uh, John Hamblin, and he's an evangelist from Caton, uh, Can or Canton, Michigan, so he's from Canton, Michigan, so let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of the solution for human hearts, and he says here, writes here, never forget the spiritual, uh, spiritual, excuse me, let me reread that, never forget the spiritual success or failure of any saint can rest on what they do with scripture so amen friend he says you and i ought to step daily in the traces of the word of our god a truth tucked away in our verse that will transform the believer's spiritual trek is the bidding he writes in big bold letters there the bidding draw nigh to god all of us would be better off spiritually if we simply said, Yes, Lord, right, to his gold leaf invitations found on the pages of the Bible. If a child of God just obeyed five Bible verses on Bible reading, Psalm 63, 1, prayer, Luke 18, 1, church attendance, Hebrews 10, 25, soul winning, also known as witnessing, uh, telling somebody about Jesus, Proverbs 11.30, and the Spirit's fullness, Ephesians 5.18. And before we go on to that, I want to give you something about soul winning. But uh, we know we are part of being a witness for the Lord. And some of us plant and some others water. But God gives the increase and we can't save anybody. God does the saving. We are just to be a bold witness for the Lord. So we got to be careful with that verse there on soul winning. And understand that we are just told to be witnesses and to tell somebody about Jesus and and whether it be the first person to uh, tell somebody or whether we be the 50th person that told somebody and God is always working on that person and uh, whether they are getting closer to getting saved or they're getting farther away uh, God's Word will not come back void and he does what he needs to do in that person's life so let's remember that okay so continuing on um, he says here again, let me read these uh, um, things here again. If a child of God just obeyed five Bible verses on Bible reading, which is Psalm 63, 1, that's the passage there. Prayer, Luke 18, 1. Church attendance, going to church, making sure you're in a good Bible-believing church and around fellow believers to be edified and to encourage one another. Hebrews 10, 25. Soul winning, uh, witnessing. Proverbs eleven thirty. And the Spirit's fullness, Ephesians 5.18, we'd have the build larger fundamental churches to hold the crowds that would come this Sunday, right? Another tremendous truth in this verse that will transform a believer's faith for walk is the blessing. So first we have the bidding, <clears throat> and then the blessing, and he will draw nigh to you, since God's stride is so much more sizable than the saints. Just start his way, and the Lord will meet you more than halfway. Ask the prodigal son for his testimony of this truth. And it says, see Luke 15, 20. So um, we will go there really quick and look at this uh, about the prodigal son in Luke 15. So let's go there really quick. Luke chapter 15. And where do we need to start here? So, 15, and what was the passage? 20. So, you know the the parable here about this prodigal son that uh, 
uh, had um, taken his father's inheritance and spent it foolishly. And then he re realized what he was doing. And then he repented and came back home. And his father welcomed him with open arms and all that. So verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And, and then he uh, says here in 21, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. So, and then we know about what happens with the elder son, and all that, so we won't uh, go any farther than that uh, today. So, again, I encourage you to read that on your own time. And so the final cleansing truth in this verse that will transform a believer's walk is the bathing and it says here, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. No question, the worldly walk of a child of God is a billboard that shouts, This is the byproduct of no communion with Christ for a long period of time. Think about that and get right with God, right? So, if you've gone by the wayside, it's never too late to get back on the right track and get on the right side with the Lord again. So, amen. All right, good topic there. And uh, let me reread you those three things again. The bidding, and that's draw nigh to God. And then the blessing, and he will draw nigh to you. And then the bathing, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, let's get all uh, right with God if you're gone astray. Okay, so now it's time to grab the Daily Strength Volume 1 book as we're continuing through this topic of obedience continued, the second week on obedience, and today is Thursday, day 243, and this is titled Obedience in the Workplace. So, so far this week we've had the obedience of a citizen, and then that was Monday, Tuesday was obedience in the home, and then today is obedience in the workplace. So, let's get started here in Titus 2, verses 9 to 10 says, Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Okay, so introductory thoughts. It says, Living the Christian life is not limited in time or place. In fact, the workplace serves as one of the most important places for a Christian to exemplify a testimony for the Lord Jesus. Yet Christians can fail miserably by being lazy workers or disobedient to employers. According to Scripture, servants are to obey their masters. Titus 2.9 from the heart. Colossians 3.22 with fear and trembling. Ephesians 6.5-8 are the references there. Not only are Christians responsible to obey godly bosses, but the Bible commands the same respect to be given to those who are forward. Uh, 1 Peter 2.18 Believers ought to behave beyond the norm in their service in the workplace. The Bible affirms this truth by saying that servants should please their masters with well in all things. Titus 2.9 Many lost people have been led to Christ by Christians who live godly and display an impeccable testimony at work so let's have a good testimony at work all right now devotional thoughts for children it says when we do a job for someone we are to work as if the lord himself asked us to do it because he is and he puts you in that uh, job so you can do it for him and serve the lord and be a witness also while you're there if you're able to and talking to somebody about jesus Okay, so that's uh, that. And then continuing on on this devotional thoughts for children, it says we should not need anyone standing over us, making sure we do it, right? Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. And now for everyone, it says no matter your age or work experience, it is important to learn how to work right. When somebody asks you to do a job, you should do it heartily 
to the best of your ability as unto the Lord. What does the Bible mean when it says that servants should not uh, answer again? What does it mean to say that we should not purloin? How can we work with all good fidelity? Titus 2.10. So those are the passages there. And now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you be a godly worker. And then ask God to give you grace to deal with an ungodly employer so that you can maintain your testimony in such a difficult situation. And then that's the prayer thoughts. And then the hymn for from the book is titled Living for Jesus by Chris Holm. So that will be the second hymn for today. And good topic there. So let's learn to be obedient at home and then, then uh, be an obedient citizen and then be obedient at work. And I believe tomorrow is... Oh, no. We don't want to do that. Oh, no. Hold on a second. All right. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> oh, okay. So now I'm going to have to turn this down because it's going to give me an ad again. Oh, maybe not. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. So let's put this back to the beginning if I'm able to. All right. So this is... The first hymn and it's titled come unto me and this is hymn 518 in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book and this is um, another one of these the rest for the saint hymns a spiritual song written by charles p jones 1865 to 1949 and he's the only author for this one uh, hymn writer for this one so press play and we'll sing along as best we can you're welcome to sing along too so here we go Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. O oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Oh, okay. I gotta start this over. Alright, right, sorry about that. Here we go, try this again. Okay. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. O oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly. Come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy and my burden light, my burden light. Disappointed, wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care. Do unholy feelings struggle in your breast? Bring your case to Jesus, He will give you rest. Come unto me, come unto me, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Take my oath upon. Take my yoke upon you, take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly, I am meek and lowly. Come, come, trust my might, come, trust my might. Come, oh, come, come, my yoke is easy. Come, oh, come, come, my burdens light, my burdens light. Stumbling on the mountains dark with, with sin and shame Stumbling toward the pit of hell's consuming flame By the powers of sin deluded and oppressed Hear the tender shepherd come to me and rest Come unto me I will give 
give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly. Come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy. My burdens light. Have you cares of business, cares of pressing debt, uh, cares of social life, or cares of hope and net? Are you by remorse or sense of guilt depressed? Come right on to Jesus, He will give you rest. Come on to me. I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed, I am meek and lowly, come and trust my might, come, my yoke is easy, my burden flies. Have you by temptation offered conquered Ben? It has a sense of weakness brought distress within. Christ will sanctify you if you claim his best. In his Holy Spirit he will give you rest. Come unto me. I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly, come and trust my might, come, my yoke is easy, and my burdens lie. All right, I apologize for kind of stumbling on the third and fourth uh, stanza there. So let me reread these to you. So th stanza three is stumbling on the mountains, dark with sin and shame, stumbling toward the pit of hell's consuming flame by the powers of sin, deluded and oppressed. Hear the tender, shep tender shepherd come to me and rest. And stanza four, have you cares of business? Cares of pressing debt, cares of social life, or cares of hopes unmet? Are you by remorse or sense of guilt depressed? Come right on to Jesus. He will give you rest. Amen. And then the last stanza says, Have you by temptation often conquered uh, Ben? Has a sense of weakness brought the distress within? Christ will sanctify you if you'll claim his best in the Holy Spirit. He will give you rest. Praise the Lord. All right, so no story for this one, so let me give you the references. And here we have stanza 1 is Matthew eleven twenty eight, And stanza 2 is Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Stanza 3 is 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. And then stanza 4 is 1 Peter 5, 7. And stanza 5 is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So that is the end of the first hymn. And now we're going to jump ahead a little bit here and do this one here um what was this one? okay living for jesus so that's the next one here so let me go find the instrumental but this one living for jesus here we go okay let's see i'll do this one here all right them at the beginning. Okay, turn this back up. And now we'll do the second hymn, Living for Jesus. And this is hymn 738 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. This is the submission of a saint of the saint hymn, one of those hymns there. A spiritual song written by Thomas O. Ch Chisholm, C-H-I-S-H-O-L-M. And he lived from 1866 to 1960. And then Carl H. Loudon, 
uh, or Loden, 1883 to 1963, and no story for this one either, so press play and sing along with this. <clears throat> Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please Him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessings for me. Oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master. My heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live. O oh, Christ, for Thee alone. Living for Jesus, who died in my place, bearing on Calvary my sins and sin and disgrace. Such love constrains me to answer His call, follow His leading, and give Him my all. Oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne, my life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for Thee alone. Living for Jesus wherever I am, doing each duty in His holy name, willing to suffer affliction and loss, deeming each trial a part of my cross. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne, my life I give henceforth to live. O oh, Christ, for Thee alone. Alright, so let's go back here a little bit and do this last stanza here with the instrumental. <clears throat> Living for Jesus through worst little while my dearest treasure, the light of his smile. Seeking the lost ones he died to redeem. Bringing the weary to find rest in him. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to thee. For Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for Thee alone. Amen. Good hymn there. All right, so that is the hymn, and now let me give you the references. No story for this one. Uh, also, so stanza one, we have 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Stanza two is 1 Peter 2, 24, and 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Stanza three is Colossians 3, 17, 
in Romans 8, 17 through 18. And then stanza 4 is Colossians 3, 2 through 3. And Matthew eleven twenty eight. And then Romans 12, 1. Titus 2, 14. And 1, uh, or 1 Peter uh, 4, 2 for the um, refrain references. So praise the Lord. All right, so we'll put that uh, back to today's. And we'll jump ahead one and to tomorrow's. And so we'll put that aside there for a few minutes and get the scripture song book again. And then do see scripture songs one more time. And then wrap it up for today. So here we go. Yesterday's. First Corinthians. 13, 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, these three. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. And now by the faith, hope, charity. These three, these three. And now by the faith, hope, charity. These three. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. That's right. Now today's one more time. Philippians two five through eight. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right. who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's right. Praise the Lord. Let this mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and be came obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let this mind, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right, so that is it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and the Daily Strength Volume 1 books and then the hymns for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 6th and Psalm 27.1 is the scripture song verse says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Right? So, that is tomorrow's scripture song verse. And we'll go over um, Psalm 27 and see who wrote that. I believe it was the Psalm of David. 
And then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist Bread for Friday, October 6th is titled, A Friend Refreshing. In Acts 27, 3 is the passage there. And uh, so that will be tomorrow's topic. And then the Daily Strength, Volume 1 book here is, uh, we're continuing on this topic of obedience. Continued second week on obedience. And tomorrow is Friday, due, uh, day 244. And obedience in the church. And Hebrews thirteen seventeen is the passage. And then the song is titled, The Preacher's Life. So that would be the hymn for tomorrow. I'm not too familiar with that one. So we'll look for the um, hymn there. Uh, instrumental. And sing along with that, hopefully. And then the first hymn tomorrow will be titled, Come Unto Me and Rest. And I believe that these three hymns, um, back to back, are similar tunes to each one of these hymns. And this is hymn 519 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Not written by the same people, but have similar tunes to them. Yes, uh, today's is Come Unto Me, and then tomorrow's is Come Unto Me and Rest. And then the following day for Saturday will be Come and He Will Give You Rest. So those are the three there. And similar um, stanzas and um, hymns here. So, amen. All right. So that will be tomorrow's. And then there's a story for tomorrow's. Not a story for the next day, but there's a story for tomorrow's um, first hymn. And if you want to get a copy of the hymn book here, this is what it looks like there. So let me, sorry, this is getting a little uh, worn out. It's uh, been used a lot by me. <laughs> So, amen, that's the cover there for the book. And then the Daily Strength Volumes 1 through 4 books are they're all available on MelodyPublications.com is where you can get these four books and then the hymn book. So check that out if you want to get any of those books there. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website at www.DailyScriptureSong.com if you want to get any of those uh, things and check out their website and See what they're up to over there in Guyana. So pray for them. All right. And then the Baptist Bread uh, devotional book is available online at baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth and searching the Scriptures. And, of course, going to God in prayer and asking Him to show you and guide you and direct you into all truth. Amen. Through His Holy Word. And that's it. And if you know somebody who doesn't have Facebook, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and uh, all that. So that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.